So before we start, let's again say a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, without you we can do nothing. And without your presence, we are all by ourselves lost into the mercy of other powers. And as Moses also prayed, Lord, we will not leave here unless you go ahead of us and be our rare God. So I pray for your presence now and for your protection. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Signs and wonders of our age. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Matthew 24, 3, 4. The greatest danger in our time, according to the scripture, is deception. Now in the previous lecture we've looked at some of the deceptions, we've looked at the statements by the great preachers and see that they are actually quoting the serpent. And they're not quoting Jesus Christ at all. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you, because these evil spirits that come out of the mouth of the beast and the false prophet, they are like frogs, they are deceivers, and false Christs and false prophets shall show great signs and wonders, and even the elect will be received. Now Rome, as we have seen, has all these unbiblical doctrines. Infant baptism was introduced in the 16th century, sprinkling in the 11th century, the state of the dead and immortality, prayers to the dead and relics, repetitive prayer and forgiveness of sins through their system, the doctrine of hell, a place and state in which devils and such human beings as die in enmity with God suffer eternal torment, the Catholic Dictionary, page 395, the selling of indulgences, the mass, the mission of the cup, Council of Trent, Sunday worship, the scripture as prohibited books or altered books, establishment of the Gutenberg and Schaeffer printing was broken up, the Huguenots, page 7, preterism, futurism, higher criticism, these are the doctrines of Catholicism. Many of them are swallowed hook, line and sinker by Protestantism, like preterism, futurism, higher criticism, all of those. Then the doctrine of Mary being immaculate, the assumption of Mary, that you have to come to Christ through Mary, and that she appeases him with her breasts. I mean, that's a sick doctrine. Luke 11, 27 and 28 says, And it came to pass as he spoke these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bore thee and the paps which thou hast sucked. But he said, Yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. So this doctrine of Babylonian uh, female deity worship is something that Jesus stopped right there. That the pagan priests of Sibel were celibate, that they were tonjured, that means shaved in a particular fashion. That's the same as what happens to monks and nuns. And the commission received the power for sacrificing for the living and the dead. This is all unbiblical. Hebrews 10, 14, because by one sacrifice he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. None of those doctrines are biblical, they are pagan. And yet, the Roman Catholic Church is going to control the whole world. Now how do you get people to follow you blindly, even in spite of the fact that you do not have biblical doctrines? If you do not have the truth and you cannot substantiate it through the Word of God, then how must you sell yourself? Well, there's only one other way. You either have to mystify the mind so that people do not know these things and do not see these things. You have to ritualize whatever you are doing so that people will not use their cognitive function. 
or you have to convince them with signs and wonders and miracles. Well, Catholicism surely has the power to create great emotions. If you go to the Philippines on certain festive days, the people, even the children, put crowns of thorns on them, and some of them have themselves literally crucified. Literally crucified. And then, let's look at some more Catholic doctrine. The Roman Catholic Church in 1987 already said, Genesis is nonsense. In fact, they denounced it as utter nonsense. Isn't that interesting? That was the Sunday Times, December 6, 1987. Then the Vatican thinking evolves. The Pope gives his blessing to natural selection. That was Time magazine. So, more and more unbiblical. The German newspapers read it like this. Papst Johannes Paulus II und die Bibel hat doch nicht recht. And the Bible is wrong after all. Nice. So, you can follow the teachings of this system where the Bible is wrong after all. This is the journal, Elm Street, and Heaven and Nature Sing, and this was a discussion that was held with the Jesuits as a consequence of this teaching of creationism. And uh, they asked this Jesuit, aren't you guys creationist? Consul Magno likes to point out that creationism is a 19th century Protestant heresy. Nice. The ancient church fathers knew better than to interpret the Bible this way. The Jesuits don't teach that, he says. We teach evolution. And we know better. It's a Protestant heresy. So if you believe the Bible, and if you believe in creation, then you're a heretic. Isn't that interesting? Wow. Well, this is a Protestant church, and look at those nice pagan sun symbols over there. There's the symbol of the sun god, Lucifer, and there you have the rays of the sun. Here on this particular church, we're talking about 250 million year old um, trees all around it. They've swallowed it hook, line, and sinker. In fact, I had the privilege of preaching in the biggest Protestant church hall, one of the halls, in Zurich, in Switzerland. And I was giving lectures on creationism, and the head of that particular uh, area came and said, now hang on a second, you're preaching in our hall, but what are you going to say? This is the biggest Protestant denomination in Switzerland. And I said, well, I'm going to preach about creationism. He says, not in our, not in our hall. You're not going to say that God is the creator. We don't go along with that rubbish. And I said, well, what are we going to do now? Because the invitations had gone out that I was going to talk about evolution creation. And they said, well, not in our hall. So we said, well, what are we going to do now? Because we hired the hall and we sent out the pamphlets. And uh, they cost a lot of money. And uh, you cannot just cancel the hall like this. So they discussed and argued, and then they came to a compromise. And the compromise was that I could preach it as long as I announced before the lecture that this was not the view of the biggest Protestant group in Switzerland. Then I could preach it. And I said, with pleasure. <laughs> with pleasure. So I got onto the stage and I said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you about creationism versus evolution, but the biggest Protestant denomination in your country tells me to tell you that they don't believe it and distantiate themselves from it. Thank you, now may I continue. And I continued. <laughs> well, I was interested when I came out of the hall, I hadn't seen that before, that they actually have the creation depicted on their one wall. And as I went closer, I saw some interesting things, and I thought, what's this going on over here? And there was their creator. It was Brahma breathing out and breathing in, mystifying the creation. Well, that's Protestantism for you, unfortunately, today. And maybe the Catholic Church is right when it says that Protestantism, what did they say? The murderous hag will not much longer encumber the earth. And when the Episcopals said, Protestantism is dead. Sad. Well, Jesus Christ doesn't mean much anything anymore either. 
He's being dethroned as uh, born by divine intervention. He was not born of a virgin. He wasn't part of a, a resurrection. All these doctrines in the Bible are not being believed today. Jesus Christ, plain and simple, they're arguing about him all the time. And quietly, 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 Mary in Catholicism took the place, and Jesus Christ is nailed to the crucifix over there with the tools of masonry. Interesting, interesting. And uh, Mary, mother and child, is really something else. But while in the Blessed Virgin, the church has already reached that perfection whereby she exists without spot or wrinkle, the faithful still strive to conquer sin and increase in holiness, and so they turn their eyes to Mary. In her, the church is already all holy. Article 829, Roman Catholic Catechism. Biblical or unbiblical? Totally unbiblical. Then, devotion to the Blessed Virgin. Article 971, all generations will call me blessed. The Church's devotion to the Blessed Virgin is intrinsic to Christian worship. The Church rightly honors the Blessed Virgin with special devotion from the most ancient times. The Blessed Virgin has honored, was honored with the title Mother of God. This very special devotion differs essentially from the adoration which is given to the incarnate Word and equally to the Father and the Holy Spirit and greatly fosters this adoration. Great. So the liturgy, this is everything that happens, all the excitement in the churches, feasts dedicated to the Mother of God and Marian prayer such as Rosary, an epitome of the whole Gospel, expresses this devotion to Mary. Well, Mary is an eschatological icon of the church. In the meantime, the mother of Jesus and the glory which she possesses, body and soul in heaven, is the image and the beginning of the church. So, if I follow Catholicism, I am following another God, not Jesus Christ. So the Pope manifests this veneration by bowing down to the idol, something that's forbidden, by the second commandment, which is no problem to Catholicism because they can change God's law and they've taken out the second commandment, so why should it bother them? Mary so contrary. So all over the world, huge statues are being erected here in South America. Look at the size of this thing. There's a human being as a scale. It's enormous. 500,000 pilgrims wait for the Madonna. Interesting. Half a million people. How to believe in miracles. And miracles are performed by the manifestations of Mary. Here in Austria, I find this one over here. Mary hat, Maria hat geholfen. Mary has helped. And there are the crutches and things that people have thrown off. This poor man has said his, his uh, confession and now he's doing his penance. And they have various crosses of various sizes standing around this little church in Austria with the words, Maria hat geholfen. And if you were a, had a big sin, then you have to carry a big cross and you have to carry it around the church, let's say, 20 times and your sin's gone. Or if you said a small sin, well, you carry a small cross around the church 20 times, look like a real idiot in front of all those people, and uh, then your sins are forgiven. Well, here's another one. This is Sant Maximilian Maria Kolbe. He's the founder of the Knights of the Immaculata, and he was uh, a founder of the movement that was to put Mary at the forefront in the final events of this world. And this book, The Thunder of Justice, has a foreword by, by uh, Malachi Martin, who was the pontifical professor at the Gregorian Jesuit University in Rome, the number one exponent of Catholic doctrine. And it talks about the new Catholic visionaries and their predictions. And there's a whole host of them, starting with a number of Marian priests. Now, in 1973, Father Gobi began to write down interior locutions. So he received messages which he wrote down by hand. The messages now number 600 and are published in a book 
titled to the priests, Our Lady, Beloved Sons. And in summary it says, Be faithful to the Father, total obedience to His commands. See the opposite of Jesus. This Pope demands total obedience. Jesus says, If you love me, obey my commandments. This Pope says, Obey me or else. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Then it says, be ready to fight, even to the shedding of their blood, in order to remain united to him and faithful to the gospel. His gospel, not my gospel. And to see how important this Father Gobi is, here you see the Pope greeting Father Gobi with a nice Masonic handshake, the one dressed in black, the other one dressed in white, the Masonic colors. Our Blessed Mother told us through Father Gobi, September 18, 1988, that we have a period of ten years, ten decisive years, and in this period of ten years there will come to completion the time of the Great Tribulation which has been foretold to you in the Holy Scriptures. In this period of ten years all the secrets, referring to Fatima, which I have revealed to some of my children will come to pass. Alright, let's work that out. September 18, 1988 plus 10 is how much? September 18, 1998. So, by September 1998, everything will be in place for the end time events. Have you got that date? Now that's what the devil says. The devil is a liar and has been a liar from the beginning. So, well, whether it is so or whether it is not so is interesting. But this is to the whole church of Catholicism, and this is by the authority of Mary, and surely the devil will want to keep his church on track as well. So, let's see what this is all about. So we have a date. Remember it, put it in the back of your mind. September 1998. Everything must be in place. He states that a, there will be a last dogma in Marian history, and that is that Mary must be declared co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and uh, she must also be declared advocate for the people of God. This dogma will be the last in Marian history. Co-redemptrix, mediatrix, advocates. One scholar in the Roman Catholic Church remarks that the title advocate is used almost exclusively for Mary and not for the saints. It is particularly appropriate to Mary. My Bible says, 1 John 2 verse 1, My little children, these things write unto you that ye sin not, and if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So that must be a lie, right? It's not biblical. So this final Marian doctrine, let's see who supports it. Aha! Uh -huh. These apparitions are under investigation by the church as of this writing. Cardinal Ratzinger. You've heard of him? He's the head of the Foundation for Doctrine and Faith. That is the Inquisition. One of the mightiest cardinals in Rome. Cardinal Ratzinger reportedly has written to the visionary that there are no theological barriers to the possible proclamation of the dogma. Very interesting. Then Newsweek picks it up, and they have this interesting symbol. T, by the way, is the first letter of Titan, which is Satan's Greek name, with a flame on it, and the inner sacred heart. That is a symbol of Lucifer. Uh, I'm sure they know how they did that. It's very interesting if you're an insider, if you know these symbols and you've studied them, you all know what that means. And what are they saying? They're saying papal infallibility. The Pope has been asked to exercise the power of papal infallibility to proclaim a new dogma of the Roman Catholic faith that the Virgin Mary is co-redemptrix, mediatrix of all graces and advocate for the people of God. Very interesting. So we're on track. Mary, my Eve, my Mary. Remember the doctrine? That Eve was the one who fell, and Mary, through obedience, redeemed us from sin. So that's why she becomes co redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate for the people of God. And then they say, final events will come onto the planet, and there will be manifestations of signs and wonders. Extraterrestrials play a great part in this, and of course, extraterrestrials 
are nothing other, if you know that this planet is isolated, and that sin is isolated to this place, then these manifestations are demonic. They are exactly the same as hypnotic, the people have the same experiences as under hypnotic guise, and the symbols of Luciferian worship are associated with all of these. And if you look at the movies that are made, Star Wars and all of those, it is the great battle between good and evil, with Lucifer being depicted as the main honcho, the victor, the force. The force is Illuminarian thinking. The force is always Lucifer. The force be with you. Jesus is not the force. So we have manifestations in, in nature out there, like the crop circles. Many of them are fake. Some of them are not so readily understood. People are being made aware of miracles and signs and wonders so that they readily accept it. Manifestations of the goddess Isis, the opening of the lotus flower in Eastern mysticism, and manifestations of zodiacal worship. This man here was supposed to be the revelation of the Christ. It didn't work out so well for for the New Ages, Krishna Murti and Krishna. And uh, in Islam you have the same manifestations, like here when they cut up fruits or vegetables. This is an aubergine. They find the words Allah written inside. And Christianity and Islam and all these religions must merge into one. In Iran in 1995, it was reported in various parts of the city Tehran that an image of Jesus has been seen on fences and windows. And the Iranian newspaper Akbar on the 25th of December said that uh, many Muslims and Christians flock to the apparition building. And that's what it looked like. It's the paper Tsaitung, the Egypt, showed this manifestation of the so-called Holy Spirit and the image of the Virgin Mary floating over this church. Mary is the icon that is drawing Islam and Catholicism together. Actually Islam and Catholicism behind the scenes is exactly the same thing, always has been the same thing. Personally I believe it was the weapon to get rid of true Christianity in that whole area. And that's what it looked like. These are the newspaper photographs. Then we have weeping of statues taking place. Father Anastasios, Greek Orthodox Patriarch, this was on CNN, showed the bleeding of the icon. And again, Muslims are involved. The cleaner at this particular monastery was Hamida. CNN showed her. She was a Muslim. And she first saw Jesus weep. There were real tears, real tears. Hamida said it was beautiful, so beautiful. Can you see the merging of the religions? Of course, Matreya, we've dealt with him in the New Age. He came and he manifested himself. And uh, he is going to flood the world with such happenings that the mind can never comprehend it. Matreya's associate in Share International, July 1992. By manifesting a variety of unusual signs, Matreya and his masters draw attention to the fact that we live in an extraordinary times. We made a selection of the most spectacular of these phenomena and then are image of the Virgin Mary, light emanates from Japanese, uh, Bodhisattva image, worldwide Hindu, Muslim miracles, Lebanese girl, crystal tears, sacred images, weeping Madonnas. So what do we have here? Do you see the merging of the religions? The same signs and wonders will draw them together. And now, in the area where Matraya appears, you have, even in Germany, people rushing to the water because it becomes turbulent and holy water emanates, which is used for healing. And in the windows, permanent crosses started appearing. Many crosses of light have miraculously appeared in windows worldwide, all over the place. And then strange lights start shining, like here on the Matreya, or on the Buddhas in the Eastern Temple. So Hinduism, Muslim, Christianity have these manifestations intermingled. And then the great miracle of uh, Lord Ganesha and other Indian icons drinking milk. It's a miracle. Rejoice! Millions rejoice 
as the icon sips milk. They go up to it and make it sip milk and it sips milk. I always say Ganesha should come to my health lectures, I'll tell him a thing or two, maybe he'll change his, his diet. Here's another icon, drinking milk, and the Hindu world is going crazy as a result. Here's a little girl, Hasna, and she weeps tears of crystal, real tears of crystal. And then images appear in the rocks, in cracks, in uh, Aborigine um, country, and then in the United States, the two white buffalo calves are born, one in 1994, another in 96, fulfilling Native American prophecies. The odds to such an aberration are estimated at 6 to 10 million to 1. Everybody is preparing for the final events. Catholicism, since 1962, since Vatican II has drawn the Protestant world in, and now she's drawing in all the others. Bosco, as you remember, said that one year before the end of the millennium, the Pope would succeed in landing the gospel ship. In other words, the fact that all, the, or the idea that all the religions will come together under one roof before the end of the last millennium is what was predicted by Don Bosco, and what was the date uh, that Mary predicted? By September when? 1998. Everything would be in place for the final events. Well, Millionen US Katholiken wollen eine göttliche Jungfrau Maria. Millions of US Catholics want a godly Mary, Virgin Mary. Now, what is the chance that the church would say yes? So there are 4.3 million signatures to have Mary declared a goddess. That's interesting. Now, let's read on. This is Kornenzeitung in Germany, 3897. Cardinal John O'Connor, as well as Pope John Paul II, a big Mary, uh, hmm not worshipper, verehrer, one who holds her in high regard, soll die Idee nicht abgeneigt sein, are not averse to the idea? Very interesting, so the Cardinal John O'Connor and the Pope are not averse to the idea that Mary should be declared a goddess. How apostate can you become? How apostate? And so Our Lady, Our Lady of Guatemala, 1994, the manifestations of Mary start coming in, and the icons start weeping oil, and the people are sort of lifted into ecstasy. Viele Religionen verehrten Maria. Many religions honor Mary. Mary supplants the Earth Mother. Mary is the icon of our age. She is the one where all these manifestations will take place. When she appeared in Lourdes, there was the dancing of the sun and the strange light manifestations and the water which poured out of the rock. So Mary is to become the final icon. That is why the Pope venerates her, that's why he crowns her, that's why he does all these things. Now, when you had in your country the Wade versus uh, Roe situation were about abortion. At that particular time, France tested this nuclear bomb, and in the explosion, you had this manifestation here of what appears to be Christ on the cross and the image of Mary looking down in disapproval. These are the visionaries of Garabandal, Spain, little children. Now this really is frustrating for me that the devil should have access to these little children in these religious systems. And here they are in vision, lying on the floor with their eyes closed, if you look, in vision, and uh, these visionaries will tell us what the manifestations are going to be. Now firstly, when you look at these, this is not biblical. This is not from God. We will be dealing how prophets go into vision, and this is not biblical. This is demonic. 
The messages warn the people of the earth are floundering in a morass of debauchery, moral confusion, deep spiritual darkness, and should heaven's directions and counsel go unheeded, the Eternal Father in the Trinity will be left with no alternative but to forcefully recall mankind to its obligation through chastisement. Ah, interesting. So this world is going to see chaos and is going to see chastisement in floods, natural disasters, wars. What is the motto of Freemasonry? Ordo ab Cow, order out of chaos. They're going to say, you are so morally debauched, so in order to do that, they must first introduce moral debauchery. Switch on your televisions and watch the moral debauchery. That's all you have to do. Introduce it to the young people, introduce the drugs, introduce this, that and the other, introduce the chaos, so that you have cause to introduce the solution. Back to obedience to whom? To the one voice that will sound logical. The Roman Catholic Church will say, we have to return to moral values. You have to obey the dictates of the Pope. And they will introduce laws which are the laws of the Catholic Church and not the laws of God. And the people will say, that's better than this chaos. Watch it. Vasula handwriting, so demonic spirits take over and give. Automatic handwriting, that's not biblical either. Father Laurentine, but in the case of these messages, is it your hand that moves, or rather is it dictated? It is dictated. Yes, it is simultaneous. At first he guides my hand without dictating. So this demon takes, part, takes hold of the hand and writes it. Since June 1981, in the small village in Yugoslavia, Madjugorje, the Blessed Virgin Mary, has been appearing. And she says there will be a sign given to the atheists. There will be signs that even the unbelievers will go along. These little children of Madjugorje are the ones who received the messages and each received a secret little message from Mary. Secret, 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 secret. That's not from God either. This is Miriana, one of the, uh, the young girls from Madjugorje. She's older now. There are appearances of Mary at Madjugorje. There's one. Strange flashes of light. This one here comes from Arizona, here in the United States. This man was traveling. His wife said, the plant has beautiful flowers on it. She said, I don't, he said, I don't see any flowers. So he took a picture and when it was developed, there was Mary of the Rosary behind it. Manifestations for the psyche of man. All over these icons, strange lights appearing in Madjugorje, and then this image appearing between the two um, steeples of the church. And people stand in awe and say, this is divine manifestation. When she appears, she has light streaming from her hands, and uh, photographs that are developed show these strange flashes of light and strange manifestations in the clouds, such as Jesus with beard and everything intact right over there, or strange appearances behind photographs. And this woman over here leaning on a pillar that doesn't exist, the pillar of light. Strange manifestations. St. Francis also appears, and by the way, St. Francis, of course, was uh, the roommate of Loyola, Jesuit. Strange rainbows of light, strange light over crosses where thousands of people come together, apparitions and roses blooming in the middle of winter if such an apparition occurred. And then you also have fire coming down from heaven. The Bible says that, you know, interesting. This flame of fire passing sometimes into a person or around the person or even through a person, like here, this ray passing right through, it'll be seen on the, on the screen of the video. Uh, two people over here with a Bible in the hand and the light passing right through all of them, plus the Bible in their hand. And in their meetings, they have these manifestations of light, like tongues of fire. In other words, it's copying the manifestation that you had at Pentecost, where what seemed to be tongues of fire came down 
on the disciples. So here are all these people gathered together with these flashes of light on them. And the main delegates, the speakers, had like streams of fire going into them. That's pretty impressive when you sit there. All over the sky you have these, these manifestations. Little appearances of uh, Marian appearances all over amongst the crowds. Even in volcanic eruptions you have Madonna and child appearances. This one was taken out of an aeroplane where so-called Jesus walks in the clouds. So people are prepared for signs and wonders. Guardian angels at baptisms, writing in the sky, Jacinta, one of the visionaries. Strange writings which are being analyzed. This, by the way, was taken up in the sky. It's a picture of one of the monks sitting in his monk chair, riding the stairway to heaven. Catholicism, the way to heaven. Here is another one taken in a, an American supermarket of Mary, riding an escalator. Strange that she needs an escalator. Well, Toronto, blessings are one way of manifestation, and this manifestation here of light behind icons or appearances of Jesus in a tornado or weeping is another one that you find in Catholicism. Many icons are weeping blood, and it is said that Mary is weeping because of the sins of mankind, because they are not returning to obedience. In uh, the Philippines, when they have their Marian day, then these petals, rose petals, fall from the sky. They just fall out of nowhere. People pick them up all over the place. And when they look at the rose petals, there are little icons in them of Joseph with the child, Jesus grown into this one, Mary with the light streaming from her hand out of that one, there's the whole Holy Family with the Holy Spirit above it, another one of Mary, and there's one with the face of Jesus, there's his nose and his eyes, there's another one of Jesus with a sacred heart, including the pagan hand signal, everything there, not drawn on, grown into the leaf. Isn't that interesting? There are more, the crucifixion, with the women at the cross, and uh, on and on and on, very clear rose petals of these manifestations. Mary warns that the Father will inflict a terrible punishment on all humanity. Fire will fall from the sky. That's interesting. Balls of fire falling from the sky. Wow. We had that in New York, not so long ago, and uh, this is a depiction of what it might look like. Now some of the icons weep blood, it's been sent for analysis, it is human blood, and some of them weep oil, it is absolutely pure, crystal clear, pure olive oil. Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, an hour after midnight, prayer vigil began in 19, December 1998. The miracle statue of Our Lady of Guadalupe again began to weep real tears. She cried again the following afternoon and weeping virgin of Las Vegas. So your country has many of these manifestations. Now this particular icon belongs to a lady by the name of Julia Kim. She is a visionary. Not only is she a visionary, but she also suffers as Jesus suffered by the bleeding of the hands and sometimes the bleeding around the skull and the bleeding of the feet. She suffers the pains of the crucifixion for the sins of man. Now before I get to that, is that biblical? Is it necessary for someone to be crucified and suffer for the sins of man, yes or no? No. Because Jesus Christ was sacrificed once and for all. So it's not biblical. And if it's not biblical and it's not required, then what is it? Then it's demonic. It's the only other solution that there is. So, in her particular area, here are the statues of Christ weeping blood. And this particular woman over here, Teresa Neumann, she lived from, 19, eight, from 1898 to 62. 
She was a stigmatist, stigmata, stigmatism is the bleeding of the hands, there are her manifestations. The Roman Catholic Church claims that this woman did never eat except receive the host of the Eucharist, that's it. And she predicted, very interesting, economic ruin for the United States through natural disasters. That's very interesting. And there she is with blood pouring out of her eyes and out of her hands. And she had manifestations of crosses burnt into her hands. This man over here is also regarded as a saint now. He died in 1968. This is Father Pio, Padre Pio of Italy, a stigmatist. And he said, it would be easier for the world to exist without the sun than the holy sacrifice of the Mass. So the Mass is the one pillar that must be revered and Marian worship the other pillar. Here he is assisted during Mass. In Rome we had hosts for the Mass, even in icons, suddenly bleeding and showing spots of blood on them. And you had miracles of the Eucharist taking place all over the world. In 1991, 1995, all the time these miracles happen that the host turns into blood. Here it has turned into a clot of blood, showing that the host really does go into uh, transubstantiation. Here this priest is examining the host. Now, this is fascinating. I was in Germany at the time when this happened. Uh, the Pope was giving the Mass to Julia Kim, the stigmatist and visionary in the Roman Catholic Church, and as he gave her the Mass, and he put the wafer onto her tongue, it turned into blood. And the newspaper said, Bild said, Was hast das zu bedeuten? Papst sah hostia bluten. What does this mean? Pope saw the host bleed. And the actual picture was taken of the host turning to blood in her mouth. There it is, the Pope giving her the Mass, and there it turns into blood in her mouth. Now, of course, great signs and wonders and secrets. And uh, this lady over here is Christina Gallagher. She's in Britain. Every continent today has a stigmatist. Europe has one, the East has one, uh, South America has one, and Africa has a stigmatist. Here she is bleeding from the hands and the feet. They suffer terribly. And there are stigmatists even in Islamic countries to draw them to these miracles. Here the Pope blesses Julia Kim and she receives a medal from the Pope for her outstanding work. Julia Kim with a papal nuncio. This is big deal. And here she is with the cardinal with the unfortunate name, Cardinal Sin of the Philippines in 1992. Here's another stigmatist. She comes from Bolivia, that's Catalina. And uh, she says she is called Catalina by Jesus. This is very sad, really. And she receives messages in Spanish. When she goes into the stigmata, she suffers tremendously. This is how her feet swell up and, they, and she bleeds profusely. And icons all over where she is start bleeding blood, and blood trickles down the icons and the crucifixes. This lady over here, she was from Britain. She was a stigmatist. She has recently died. She couldn't eat anymore. She suffered intensely. Uh, Caliga also gets the symbols of the crown of thorns. And this lady over here is Sister Anna Ali. She's from Nigeria. She's the African stigmatist. All over the world we have these, these uh, manifestations. The worst one to me is the Damascus one. And there you have a young stigmatist. When she goes into stigmata, then the icons weep oil. And this is this young girl, Mirna Nazur. When she goes into the stigmata, she suffers intense pain. And this is what she looks like, photographed while receiving the stigmata with a Catholic priest standing next to her. And uh, that's what she looks like normally, an ordinary beautiful young lady. Perhaps my heart when Satan does that. Then she starts going into stigmata and she starts bleeding. She has terrible, terrible pain and she looks like she's been in a car smash. She has to be hospitalized just to keep her alive. Some love of God, isn't it? 
Isn't it disgusting? By one sacrifice he has forever made perfect. And the devil uses young children and people and manifests his wicked power to dupe people into following this diabolical system. It is sick. There she has, weeping at the feet, bleeding of the hands, and the icons drip oil and the people rush to get hold of this oil. These are chemical analyses of the oil showing that it's 100% pure, done by German laboratories. Big deal. This is another young girl called Staklara who goes into ecstasy and olive oil pours through her skin. Pure olive oil, there it comes. Everything dripping with oil. Her hands drip with oil. Everything just pours out of her body and flashes of light all over the place. And people that come into contact with the water in these areas are healed. They walk for miles with their buckets, no matter at where it is. CNN News Flash, 1996, reported the figure of the Virgin Mary appeared in a window in Florida. Masses joined the worship of this phenomenon in front of the building, praying with a rosary, the crucifix, and others broke out in ecstatics of tongues. Interesting, right where we find tongues. We find tongues all over the place. Tongues with manifestations of Mary. Well, are they from God or are they from another side? Well, that is the building. It's a bank. Very interesting. Banks are normally owned by Masonic institutions. And there it is. The icon, you can go and look at it. It's still there. The manifestation of Mary in the window. And millions are duped. This person of here is converted to Catholicism and the rosary appears magically above. Taken 1998 in Atlanta, Georgia, of myself, recent convert named Jill from Taylorsville, was converted to Catholicism by the grace of God by the intervention of our Holy Mother in Georgia. This picture was taken after a talk I gave in Atlanta. I was praying over her and her medals when a rosary in the shape of a heart appeared between us in the picture. Interesting. So let's summarize. Mary predicts that Pope John Paul II will be the last Pope before the final events. That's interesting. She says a new, the new Pope will come and he will be eliminated by an Islamic convert, Bishop, who declares himself Pope. I don't know whether any of this is true. I mean, the devil's been a liar from the beginning, but this is what he says. There will be a new world order. There will be chastisement, which I think will probably be plagues that the devil is trying to cover up. True Pope will be restored, the Church will reign, and the coming of Christ. The titles of Mary, every single title you can imagine, Mother of the Second Advent, the New Eve, Queen of Heaven, the Assumption, the Holy Rosary, hundreds of titles. The Church will reign again. And with this Pope, everything will be accomplished for the final events. Well, this Pope has declared the, the year 2000, he declared that as a holy year, and everything had to be accomplished before that. The church is warning on abortion and warning on this and saying that the abolition of punishment is a bad thing. And this pope says we must get back to moral values now, quick. The Catechism of the Catholic Church says, the church is the pillar and the bulwark of truth and has received the solemn command of Christ from the apostles to announce the saving truth. Then it says over here, listen to this, in morals, the magisterium of the church in moral matters is ordinarily exercised in catechesis and preachers with the help of the work of the theologian. Thus from a generation to generation under the pastors, the Christian moral teaching has been handed on a deposit composed of the characteristic body of rules. So moral teaching belongs to the church and Ever since St. Augustine, the Ten Commandments have occupied a prominent place in catechesis of baptismal candidates and the faithful. Interesting. So the moral teachings of the Decalogue. In the 15th century, the custom arose of expressing the commandments of the Decalogue in a rhymed formula. The Catechism of the Church has often expound Christian morality by following the order of the Ten Commandments. Okay. Now the Church is going to allow this chaos to continue, and then people will say, we need morality. And 
The church has the right to command morality, and it does it by the order of the Ten Commandments. That's the Catechism, Article 2065. Now I have a question for Rome. Rome, which Ten Commandments? <laughs> the Bible Ten Commandments or your Ten Commandments? Well, the next point answers it. Article 2066, the division and numbering of the commandments have varied in the course of history. Very interesting. Not to my knowledge, only to their knowledge. The present catechism follows the division of the commandments established by St. Augustine and has become tradition in the Catholic Church. So we are following the St. Augustine Ten Commandments, not the commandments of the Lord, they say. Okay. Here are all the religions come together. Assisi, we've dealt with that in a lecture, under the papacy. And uh, what does Time magazine say about this pope? Behold, the Slavic pope is coming, a brother of the people. He already pours the world's balm into our breasts, and angel choirs sweep the throne for him with flowers. Wow. And he becomes the man of the year. They give him a profile. And then they said that the Pope would pray in Mount Sinai in the year 2000, which he did. And what did he say? He said the Ten Commandments are still binding. Which ones? His or the other ones? Well, they both are, but he's certainly going to enforce his. Now, in 1991, Mary revealed to Father Gobi, my Pope, John Paul II, I confirm for you, is the Pope of my secret, the Pope of whom I spoke to the children during the apparitions, the Pope of my love and my sorrows. When this Pope will have completed the task which Jesus has entrusted to him, that's the unification of everyone under the papacy, I will come down from heaven and receive his sacrifice. All of you will be cloaked in dense darkness of apostasy, which will then become general. Okay. So I expect that wickedness on the earth and chaos will increase and increase, and when this Pope dies, wickedness will be paramount. Then interesting things should happen, according to this. This is not what I say, this is what Mary says. But then, Mary is not really Mary, she must be a demon because Mary is asleep according to the Bible. Therefore this guy could be lying. It could be happening now, it could be happening then. What will be the remedy for the world's apostasy? Let's ask the Catholic Church. What did Mary say? The remedy. This is a place where we see many of the root causes of our problem. It is the commandment of keeping the Sabbath holy. Are you stunned? So what is going to be the issue in the final days? The day of worship. In the Old Testament, not honoring this day was only one of several sins punishable by death. Although we are not living under the law of the Old Testament, there is widespread abuse all throughout the Christian culture concerning the Sabbath. In the West we have lost God through the affluence, and in the East God has been lost through communism and suffering. Both have lost sight of a Sabbath. And thus our problems have become so large we no longer even know where to start to find the solution to our ills. Aha! Morality is going to be corrected by bringing people back to the Sabbath. Which Sabbath? The biblical one or the Catholic one? Obviously the Catholic one. Let's make sure. God's intention for the Sabbath was a day of rest, honoring God through worship, conversation, teaching and praise. Today, if someone even bothers to go to church at all on Sunday, so the Catholic Church is going to honor the Sunday. Did she do it? Oh yes, this is the bomber. Apostolic letter, Dias Domini of the Holy Father, John Paul II, to the bishops, clergy, and faithful of the Catholic Church on keeping the Lord's Day holy. Dias Domini, John Paul II. When was it issued? Look at the date, please. May 7, 1998. Are we still in line? Oh yeah, we are still in line. We have until when? September. Okay, wonderful. Let's see what D.S. Domini says. Sunday, the primordial feast revealing the meaning of time. The spiritual and pastoral riches of Sunday as it been handed on to us by tradition are truly great. Significantly, the Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches that the Sunday celebration, I'm very nervous when I hear that word celebration, <coughs> of the Lord's Day and His Eucharist is at the heart of the Church's life. 
I cannot celebrate the Eucharist anyway. As they listened to the word proclaimed in the Sunday assembly, the faithful looked to whom? The Virgin Mary. This is the Pope. This is Dies Domini. This is 1998. This is his encyclical. Learning from her to keep it with Mary, they learned to stand at the foot of the cross. They talk about with Mary, with Mary, with Mary. From Sunday to Sunday, the pilgrim people follow the footsteps of Mary. In her maternal intercession, gives special power and fervor to the prayer which rises from the church to the Most Holy Trinity. Question. If I keep this Sunday, whom am I honoring? Mary. I'm honoring Mary. I'm not honoring Jesus Christ. And Mary is asleep, so this Mary is an imposter. Who's this Mary? Well, we read what Alice A. Bailey said. Alice A. Bailey says, the manifestation of the female deity is the Lucifer. That's what you said. So you're honoring Lucifer. You're not honoring God. What does the Pope call this day? The day of the sun. He has no a problem. It says there were laws in the past honoring the day of the sun. It would therefore be wrong to see in this legislation of the past of the rhythm of the week, a mere historical circumstance with no special significance for the church and which she could simply set aside. Even after the fall of the empire, the councils did not cease to insist upon an arrangement regarding Sunday rest. We must go to Sunday rest, he says. When through the centuries she has made laws concerning Sunday rest, the church has had in mind above all the work of the servants and the workers. Now, if you want to know who controls the workers' organizations, the trade unions of the world, then I will tell you now, ahead of time, it'll come, Rome controls them. In his encyclical Rerum Novarum, uh, Pope Leo spoke of Sunday rest as workers' right, which the state must guarantee. Now, that was a pope, and a pope is infallible, and Pope John Paul II is quoting Pope Leo the 13th, and he's saying Sunday is a right which the state must guarantee. And then he says, therefore, also in the particular circumstances of our own time, Christians will naturally strive to ensure that civil legislation respects their duty to keep Sunday holy. Is he asking for Sunday laws, yes or no? Yes. He's asking for Sunday laws. That's what we dealt with when we talked about Revelation chapter 13. Who's going to enforce them for him? The beast out of the earth. This country is going to enforce them for him. So, the newspapers of the world didn't have a problem with it. Pope launches crusade to save Sunday. That was in Britain, Sunday Times, 5-7-1998. Make it clear that Sunday must not be worked, since it must be celebrated as the day of our Lord. Now, your present president, what did he say? Do you remember? I've had it on the screen many times. He said, time to implement the teachings of John Paul in this country. Did he say that? Yes. All right. Now, what are the teachings of John Paul? There you have them. Clear, in an encyclical ex cathedra, speaking as the Pope. Israel's inner minister will, fe will freien Sonntag einführen. Oh, Israel wants to introduce Sunday? What? Isn't that interesting? Oh, überall auf der Welt ist Sonntag der Ruhetag, everywhere in the world. Globalization, we must adapt, the state must adapt. Oh, very interesting. Do you think the Jews might keep Sunday also in the future? Well, here are your human rights. There are many of them, human rights. These are interesting, we'll be dealing with them in the future. Anspruch auf Religionsfreiheit. You have the right to religious freedom. But religious freedom, I have news for you, is defined within the terms of obedience to the Pope. Did you know that? So outside that obedience, there is no freedom. Now, let's see this fascinating apparition of the Blessed Virgin on the mountain La Salette in France. This is Mary, well, it's not really Mary, but it's supposedly Mary speaking. Now, 
With all the apparitions, do you think the Catholic people will follow? Oh, yes, they will, she says. If my people do not wish to submit themselves, I am forced to let go the hand of my son. It is so heavy and weighs me down so much I can no longer hold it, to keep hold of it. Oh, Jesus is made out to be a monster and Mary is keeping him in check. Oh, oh, to keep his wrath subdued, it said she has to show him his, her breasts constantly. Terrible situation up there. I have suffered all the time for the rest of you. If you do not wish my son to abandon you, I must take it upon myself to pray for this continually, and the rest of you think little of this. In vain you will pray, in vain you will act. You will never be able to make up for the troubles I have taken f over for the rest of you. I gave you six days to work. I kept the seventh for myself, and no one wishes to grant it to me. This is what weighs down the arm of my son so much. Wow! In other words, demons are calling for Sabbath keeping, but not the biblical one. We just read it. Sunday worship. And now, we're still 1998. Having issued his famous encyclical, his famous encyclical, that Sunday must become the day of rest and that civil legislation must ensure your right, the Pope takes the final step fulfilling the prophecy of the Bible that this will come again. That there will be no buying or selling unless you accept the mark of the beast which is keeping of Sunday. Sunday is the mark of our ecclesiastical power says Rome. Look at this. He comes up with his next encyclical called Ad Tuendem Fidem, by which certain norms are inserted into the code of canon law and into the code of canons of the Eastern Churches, Catholic World News. Canon 1436 reads, now, Whoever denies or places in doubt any truth that must be believed with divine and Catholic faith, or repudiates the Christian faith as a whole and does not come to his senses after having been legitimately warned is to be punished as a heretic. Hello! Pope John Paul uses the magic word that hasn't been used since the Reformation. Once again, if you don't obey him, you are a heretic. Very interesting. What else have you got to say? Or as an apostate by major excommunication, a member of the clergy furthermore can be punished by other penalties, not excluding deposition. So he says, if you do not obey, if you doubt any truth that must be believed, didn't he just define Sunday as something that must be kept, yes or no? So if I don't go along with it, if I say I don't agree with you, then I'm what? I must be a heretic. Okay. Article 2. Aside from such cases, whosoever rejects a doctrine proposed as definitively to be held, didn't he just do that in regards to Sunday, yes or no? Mm -hmm. Yes. By the Roman pontiff or the college of bishops exercising the authentic magisterium or else accepts a doctrine condemned by them as erroneous. And that's what he says about the Sabbath. And does not come to his senses after having been legitimately warned is to be punished by an appropriate penalty. Well put, John Paul. What was the appropriate penalty in the past? Death. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. Article 5. We order that everything decreed by us, the arrogance of writing us with a capital letter, another God on earth. The arrogance, the order that everything decreed by us in this apostolic letter, motto priori, be firm and valid, and we, phew, unbelievable, command that it be inserted in the universal law of the Catholic Church, that is, into the code of canon law and into the code of canons of the Eastern Churches, respectively, exactly as set forth above, anything to the contrary, notwithstanding, given at Rome, St. Peter's, 18 May, 
1998 in the 20th year of our pontificate. Well, is Sunday law ready to be enacted, yes or no? Yes. yes. The decree has gone out. Your president had said, time to implement it. President George W. Bush praises John Paul II, promises to defend the unborn child, Catholic net. March 22, the best way to honor Pope John Paul II, truly one of the great men, is to take his teaching seriously, is to listen to his words and put his words and teachings and actions into action here in America. This is a challenge we must accept. <coughs> well, the New York Times has recently said, what's going on with Bush? Why is he making so many Christian noises in his speeches. I'll tell you why. Because the time has come to implement this legislation. I'll tell you something else. When that legislation is implemented, then the Bible says that's it. The next event is the coming of Christ. Amen. So folks, is everything in place for the final events? Did it happen before September 1998? Yes. yes. Isn't that exciting? I'm excited because I can see the final events. We're going home. It's fantastic. But there's a tough time ahead and there's going to come a time which is called the Tribulation. On the website, National Review Online, John Miller, Ramesh Ponuru wrote, President Bush seems to be doing everything possible to emulate John F. Kennedy. He's not just cutting taxes, he's becoming America's second Catholic president. They say that in his remarks he began to sound like the pontiff himself. The Bible says he will speak like the dragon. Well, <laughs> how much prophecy would you like to have fulfilled more than that? That's it. That's the whole scene. CNN In war, countries suffer casualties. The risk in a democracy like the United States is that the Constitution will be one of them. Here are some of the new rules. Suspects can be held for up to seven days without being charged with anything. The Los Angeles Times reported this past week that more than a thousand are being detained. Also, the government can eavesdrop on any conversations these detainees have with their lawyers. The feds used to have to have evidence, get a judge to authorize the eavesdropping. No longer, suspicion is enough. Also, foreigners can be tried by special military courts. These would be secret, no reporters allowed. The defendants might or might not have lawyers, how would we know? The courts could admit evidence that would be inadmissible in civil court, hearsay, gossip, whatever. Juries wouldn't have to be unanimous to sentence defendants to death. There would be no appeals. Got to be able to do this, the government says, to fight terror. Anyway, Attorney General John Ashcroft says, foreign terrorists do not deserve the protections of the American Constitution. Patrick Leahy of Vermont says it sends a message that it is acceptable to hold secret trials and summary executions without the possibility of judicial review, which is certainly true. New York Times columnist William Sapphire says the President of the United States has just assumed what amounts to dictatorial power to jail or execute aliens. There is precedent. During World War II, the United States secretly tried Germans who landed here by submarine with plans for sabotage. They were convicted, most were hanged, and the Supreme Court upheld that action. So, secret star chamber trials are apparently constitutional, but they do deny defendants the protection the Constitution offers. On the other hand, the men who bombed the World Trade Center in 1993 were tried in civil court with constitutional protections, and that seemed to work. Maybe the question is, what kind of a message does it send when a country that prides itself on its freedoms, its democracy? We can hold you for a week without charging you. Yes, we can eavesdrop when you talk to your lawyer. And if you're foreign, we can try you and kill you in secret. Is that what democracies do? I'm Bruce Morton. So everything is in place. And if it gets bad enough, then what applies to the alien could apply to you guys as well. It's just a one tiny step further. Out of chaos, we will get the order that we want. 
That is what Masonry says. And Masonry is nothing other than organized Catholicism. Here you have the Pope with his bishop's staff, with Jesus as the loser on the Satanist bent cross, and the pine cone praying to Mary, and the Pope's plane, USTWA, often when it lands has this light over it, which they call the Shekinah glory. So that people will be duped into following the system. So tonight we have seen signs and wonders in Protestantism, and that much of Protestantism is fake, and that the real one to be worshipped behind the scenes is none other than Lucifer, that many of the great preachers in Protestantism are 33 degree Freemasons who actually worship Lucifer and not Jesus Christ and who are all subject to the papacy and the Pope is the high priest of occultism on this planet. And soon he will legislate, he will cause every nation on this planet to legislate Sunday legislation. Before that they will allow chaos to increase so that out of that chaos they can get the legislation that they want. That's how they operate. We are being duped, we are being led by lies, by the father of lies. But the Lord has given us the word, so I have nothing to fear. The word of the Lord is on track. It's perfect. He said, this is what's going to happen. Wow, there it's happened. So who is really in control? God. God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Is this something to shake the knees at and say, woo -hoo -hoo? No, no, no. The Lord says, when you see these things happen, then lift up your heads. For the time of your redemption is near. Wow. We're going home. I'm excited. I'm really excited. I hope you get excited. Don't get scared. But if you have family and friends out there who don't know yet, and if you love the people that are deceived, then what is our duty? To tell them. Time to speak up. Time to ask the Lord from the refreshing, the counterfeit refreshing of people falling over and rolling and carrying on like, don't know what, forget about that. Ask the Lord for the real refreshing, the empowerment by the Holy Spirit that will give you the strength and the courage to stand up and speak in spite of the circumstances in which we live. And may the Lord bless you and strengthen you in that. Amen.